Hi everybody, we are looking today at the phospholipid bilayer um, and this is basically looking at cell membranes and how they form. So cell membranes are made up of molecules called phospholipids. So to understand how cell membranes form, we're going to start off thinking generally. So let's say we've got a beaker here and this beaker is full of water. If we get a few drops of something like food colouring and we drop them into the water, then what you'll see happening, um, it will happen faster if you stir it, but even if you don't stir it, what you'll see happening is that that colour starts to spread out and eventually it will spread out throughout the whole beaker. So the whole beaker will have a sort of a, a, a greeny colour. And that tells us that those food colouring molecules have spread out and they've dissolved and now they're um, in between all of the water molecules. However, if we have another beaker of water and we get some drops of oil, when those drops go into the water, they will not dissolve. Either those drops will just sort of stay there, suspended in the water as individual droplets, or what you might see, especially if you give it a bit of a stir, is that a layer of oil is formed on the top. So this shows us that the oil has not dissolved into the water. Uh, and there are two important words here. So something which does dissolve is known as being hydrophilic. And something like oil which does not dissolve is hydrophobic. So the hydro part means water. Um, phobic means hating. So the oil is water hating. And philic means loving. So something like food colouring which dissolves is water loving. So this is important for when we start looking at the phospholipid molecules themselves. OK, so before we look at the structure of phospholipids, again, we're thinking big picture and we want to know what happens if we put the phospholipids in water. Now, there is probably a bit of a clue um, in the fact that phospholipids have got the word lipid in them, that this might be similar to what happens with oil. So if we take our beaker what you can see here are phospholipids and if we have some phospholipids they will arrange themselves like this on the surface of the water. So what you can see is the phospholipids, um, this is one phospholipid molecule um, and there's a little part here which is in the water and then this part here which we'll call the tail which is sticking up out of the water um, basically in the air. So when you put phospholipids in water, and bear in mind that these are uh, small molecules, so we wouldn't be able to see them without a microscope, they all arrange themselves like this. They arrange themselves like this automatically. Nobody's putting them this way. You just drop them in, and they will arrange themselves so that the head part, this little circle, is in the water, and the tail is sticking out. So what that suggests is that the head is uh, happy to be in the water. Maybe it's hydrophilic, and the tail is not happy to be in the water, which suggests that maybe it's hydrophobic. Now what we've got here is just a small number of uh, those phospholipid molecules which are forming a single layer on the surface. If you had more phospholipid molecules, then when you put them in the water, they'd arrange themselves um, in a similar but slightly different way. So here's our water, and if you have enough of them, then they'll arrange themselves Again, it looks a little bit like we had before, but obviously this can't be the full story because what we've got here, the whole um, of the phospholipid is in water. So this part here, so remember this is a molecule, this tail part here at the moment is in the water. And we've already seen over here that the tail doesn't really want to be in the water, it prefers to stick out of the water. So the reason that the molecules can be like this is because there are more of them. And there are so many of them that they arrange themselves like this, so that all of the tails are in the middle and all of the heads are on the outside. It's not quite finished yet though because we've got this area here where we've got tails next to water uh, and that wouldn't happen. So if you have enough phospholipid molecules, they wouldn't go like this. There would always be some at the ends looking a bit like this. So what you've got here 
is an arrangement where all of the heads of all these phospholipid molecules are in contact with the water and all of the tails which we've seen don't really like the water they're all in the middle which means that they're actually not in contact with the water at all it's like a little compartment in here which has been separated so the heads have um, are basically making sure that the tails are not in contact with the water what we've got here this is a phospholipid bilayer bi means two and so here's one layer and here is the other layer and remember they've just arranged themselves like that automatically because the heads are happy to be in water they are hydrophilic and the tails are not happy to be in water they are hydrophobic okay so let's have a little think about how this um, works with a cell so here is a regular cell so we're just going to be looking at a small if we look at a small part of it then it would look like this so you can see just like before we've got a phospholipid bilayer here's one layer of phospholipid molecules and here's the other layer of phospholipid molecules um, if we then look at the entire cell membrane so we normally draw the cell membrane as a single line um, but if we look at it under powerful enough microscope you'd see that it's actually this double layer of phospholipids so we could draw it like this so here are all the phospholipids in their double layer and I'm going to speed this up because it will take forever otherwise and what I'm going to do, sorry what I'm going to do is now we can see how it works here here's our phospholipid bilayer that bilayer obviously has to go all the way around because the cell membrane encloses the cell so I'm just going to remove this single line and then continue to draw the cell membrane as a bilayer okay so there we go we've now got a cell membrane which is drawn as a phospholipid bilayer all the way around now it's important to remember here we've got the nucleus uh, the nucleus is also enclosed by a membrane so actually this single line here is also a phospholipid bilayer so it would also have a structure as you can see here I'm not going to draw that now just because it would uh, it just it, it's a bit too small it gets a bit too tricky but any membranes within a cell will look like this a phospholipid bilayer this is our cell surface membrane because it's on the surface of the cell okay so why is this important because inside the cell we know that there is a water is cytoplasm it's water based so because we've got our phospholipid heads on this inside layer they're able to be in contact with the cytoplasm but because we've also got hydrophilic heads on the outside of the cell surface membrane that means that we can also have um, some sort of fluid which is water based on the outside and the important thing about the cell membranes is that what this cell surface membrane is doing is it is able to separate out these two substances so this blue fluid here can have a completely different composition maybe it's a different pH maybe it's got a different water potential to the cytoplasm that's inside and that's the same for any um, compartment which has a membrane around it inside the cell the cell membrane or the uh, organelle membrane is able to separate substances out that have different compositions so even inside the nucleus it could have a different composition okay so we have this understanding now of how the phospholipids um, behave in sort of a, a large scale but we don't really know why so we need to look at the structure of the phospholipid to understand why they arrange themselves in this bilayer so a phospholipid it's made up of three parts this part in the middle is glycerol and then we have two fatty acid chains so this is very similar to the triglycerides 
that uh, you learn about. Triglycerides have got three fatty acids. This has only got two. And that means that it's possible for something else to bond onto our glycerol, to one of the other carbons on glycerol. And that's what this, the head is that we've already talked about. So this head is actually a phosphate group. So we've got a phosphate group and the glycerol which make up the head. And we've got two fatty acids here which make up the hydrocarbon tail of the phospholipid. So we know they form a bilayer. How? Well, first of all, we need to think about water. It's the, water the structure of water is key. So here's a water molecule, um, H2O, and we know that water is what we call a polar molecule. It has charge. So we have a positive charge, um, and remember, it's not an ion, so we, we put this delta plus sign. So we have um, this uh, positive charge on the hydrogen and then a slightly negative charge on the oxygen. So water is a polar molecule. It has a charge. So if we have some water, then obviously there are going to be lots and lots of water molecules there, and they will all have this charge. And they arrange themselves so that hydrogen bonds are formed between the oxygen and the hydrogen of adjacent molecules. So there's one hydrogen bond, there's another. So this molecule is attracted to this molecule and the hydrogen bond there because of our positive negative charges. So let's finish that off with another water molecule and the hydrogen bonds. So here is a phospholipid. Now the important thing is that phospholipids, because of the phosphate group, are also charged. The phosphate group has a negative charge. So that means that this part here is charged. It's polar. But this fatty acid tail is not charged. It's non-polar. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you take um, phospholipids and you put them into some water, the phospholipids, when they come into the water, if they were coming like this, it's not going to stay here because you've got the um, polar water next to the non-polar or hydrophobic tail. The hydrophobic tail and is repelled by the charge on the water. Okay, it doesn't, it, it can't come into contact. It's repelled. It comes over because of the charge on the water and no charge on the tail. It gets repelled. Okay, again, comes down here. No, it's repelled. The only way it can arrange itself is if the phosphate head, which is charged, comes down and is down in this sort of arrangement here. Because what we've got now is our polar head and our polar water molecule next to each other. So again, we can get some bonding going on here and everything works. So if you were to have another phosphate uh, sorry another phospholipid molecule then again that phospholipid molecule it wouldn't be able to arrange itself like this it wouldn't be able to arrange itself like this but it would be able to arrange itself somewhere down here. So what you can see is that the phospholipid molecules arrange themselves so that the head is next to the water and the tails are away from the water. And that happens as a result of the fact that the phospholipid head has a charge and the tail does not have a charge. So a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. That's how phospholipids form a bilayer, and that's it.